This is the chaplain's voice. <laughs> God bless you. Welcome to the chaplain's voice. This is Chaplain Rodney as your host for today. Hey, we're about to get into this conversation. You see this portrait up here? You see this picture? Hey, we don't own the rights to this picture. And we don't own the rights to the music. We just barned it for a second, if that's okay. Amen. <laughs> but I want to talk to you as a as a chaplain that uh, this brings back so many memories of the things that uh, we have encountered, the things especially I have encountered going into juvenile hall. And that, 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 that posture right there, that I saw that so many times and the head down and, and, and the heart broken. It brings me to tears just to even look at it because it reminds me of the of how uh, things were going on in so many young lives. It, it, it brought me to, you know, to tears every time I see it. Uh, but it also uh, allowed us to be able to step back and to approach the situation according to the, the will and the purpose of God. When I saw this, it reminded me of a broken heart, fatherless, loved one passed on, broken the law, made the wrong choices. I see someone crying out, help me. I see someone, a young man saying, I don't understand. Where's my mom? Where's my dad? I can't do this anymore. Somebody help me. God, please help me. I've heard so many cries just like that. So many cries. But I thank God to the fact that I was available and he used my availability after he what prepared me, after he uh, took me through a process after he dealt with my own heart, my own loss, my own brokenness, my own shame, uh, my own, did I say absence? He dealt with me with my own heart first. But after he healed my own heart of my, my shortcomings, that I was able to have a true heart about a situation like this. So when I went in as a as a as a chaplain and and these young men would come and and, and you know young men they they gonna tell you everything they 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 gonna get whole spill. they ain't sucking and driving they gonna tell it all they gonna tell it all they told it all you know. You know, seeing young men trying to make adult choices. 13 to 15, 15 to 18, trying to make adult choices. As a kid. And not understanding the consequences of the things, the choices that they made. Not understanding the, the time before them and... And, 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 and uh, why me? You know, I wasn't trying to do this. This this happened. And now they're going through court and the parents are hurting. The kid is hurting. The family is hurting. Everybody is hurting. I remember the times. Uh, would you go see my son? Would you go let him know that we love him? Would you let him know that we care? Because we can't go in. We can't even go in and talk with him. But God used me to go in. 
I was that conduit. I, I was that mediator. First for God. <laughs> Amen. Because, but they knew the community I was in. They knew I was a man of God. And they trusted me. They see, that's, that's another thing. When people gain your trust, when they can trust you, they're going to call on you. When the youth can trust you, they'll promote you. When the youth can trust you in their community, they will promote you. You don't have to go around saying a whole lot. If you're trustworthy, they will promote you because they can trust you. And when they're in trouble, guess who they're going to call on? On who they can trust. So as a, as a community chaplain, I was, I was out there in a community and just being what God would have me to be and have me to do. Uh, he did it because I was faithful and what he called me to. See, when we are faithful what God has called us to, he does the rest. He does the rest. So when I ran into stuff like this, it's because they can trust me. I came running. I came to the rescue. God moved me to come to the rescue. And, 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 and we cried together. We fellowshiped together. We ate together. Why? Because the, the parents, the community could trust me. Because I was trusting God. Lord, use me any way you want to use me. You know, I believe when, a, when, a, when a, any organization is in the field, is in a community, we have to bond with the community. You have to bond that they can trust you. You have to make yourself friendly. Number one, you have to make yourself friendly, you know, and that they can trust you because troubled times are going to come. Troubled times are going to happen. It's going to happen. But the question is, will we be there? Can we, can they trust us? You know, I, I remember this. I'm, I'm uh, I will say this. Uh, I remember there were some kids that, that uh, they were at the school and they broke this window at the school. They, 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 they broke some uh, the glass, you know, the, 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 the classrooms. I heard it. I didn't, I didn't see them, but I heard it. And so I saw, some, saw them running and everything. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. I'm, I'm you know, hollering out to them and they're running. And, and I seen them, you know, and I'm like, okay, you know. And so... First thing, you know, I'm, a, you know, I need to call the police. I need to call the police. So, my, I ha happened to be, you know, at work at the time. So I went back to work and I told them what happened. You know, I dialed nine one one, and and now they asked me to go over there. But my boss said, "Wait a minute." She said, "Wait a minute." Is that the community you you were ministering? Where the kids know you and all the, you know, faith and all that over there? I said, "Yeah, yeah." She said, uh-uh, don't do that. I said, don't go talk to them. She said, no, 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 no. She said, listen to me. They trust you. Right now, take the opportunity of the trust that you have with them. Let the police be the police, but you be who you are. Be not the police. And I stopped and looked. I said, wow. See, I didn't hear her no more. I heard God through that conversation. That's what I heard. But I could have messed something up. But God intervened. And through the years, through the years, I mean, I've watched a lot of these young men grow up from elementary school, you know, through the years. And so, but again, this, this portrait of, you know, is it worth spending time? Is it worth taking out some time out of our day to, to come see about me? To go see about somebody else? 
you know, um, not changing who you are, be who you are. Be a man of God. I was a man of God. I'm still a man of God. <laughs> but as God connected me with them, even today as grown adults, as adults with their own children, guess what? The seeds you plant then, they're going to remain. They're going to bear much fruit. See, all God is saying, stay faithful. Because that heart needs truth. That heart needs somebody to lean on. That brokenness needs somebody to run to. And when they can't find it in their own home, when they can't find it on the streets, when they can't find it, guess what? Would it be you they can come running to? Would it be you they can call in the middle of the night and say, hey, I need you. I'm not saying this is for everybody. But as chaplains, when we were out there in the street at during that time, you know, God showed me so many things, mending so many relationships, uh, being a mediator between gang rivals and different things of the, of the nature, you know, trying to keep the peace between, you know, young men in the neighborhood. So this picture reminds me of so much of a sacrifice that men, godly men, we need to make this move. It could be your neighbor. It could be the young man down the street. But God, him, I, use me. That's a brokenness right there. But God says we're a mender. He's a mender of broken hearts. And he can use you and me. I'm talking to the brothers right now. He can use you and me to do this. Amen. I wanted to share a little bit of our chaplaincy. And this picture brought it so much clear to me. Um of the tears I cried and the pain that I in, uh, endured in, in, with them to the fact trusting in God, trusting in God to bring the healing and the care to the whole house. And I'm going to tell you, I experienced it many a times, many a times the joy of the Lord would come in. Hey, well, they say he might not come when you need him, but he's always on time. He's always on time. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. We will share uh, more of this of my chaplaincy as I was out in the field, even though we're still doing it, but we do it on a different level now. But God bless you so much. Hey, remember, this is the Chaplain's Voice Podcast, and we'll see you at the next podcast. God bless.